<laughs> oh my god, where's the action go, Jason? Oh, the mystery. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with JW Classic VW. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the show and the 300 plus horsepower EFI turbo build that I'm doing on Goose, my 1956 Owen Rag Top. And I know you guys are back. We're going to get into some good stuff today on updates. Going to show you what has been done on some of the sensors. Remember, I told you I had to make a bracket up and paint and all that kind of stuff for the WB2 sensor modules. Well, that's been done. Lots of updates, guys. Lots of stuff to show you right after this intro. See you in a second. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and start kind of where we left off, and that's with the <laughs> underneath goose down there. Show you what we end up doing with the WB2 Haltech modules and how I mounted those, came up with a little bracket, and uh, yeah, what that kind of looks like. So we'll get underneath there, and then I'll kind of show you what else I've been up to because, man, I've been knocking out all kinds of stuff in my, uh, <laughs> you know, behind the scenes type things. And if you're following the social media, you know, Instagram, Facebook group, if you're part of those, You've seen some of what's been going on. So let's start with the bracket and the modules, and then we'll move into some of the other things that's been going on. So first things first, let's get underneath Goose. <laughs> All right, guys, let me move you over here and show you some of the business. It's so open without a transmission, Jay. I know, it's like crazy with no engine and transmission. Let's give you the wide angle view, guys. So let's move the Cool Rides Customs uh, capper bar out of the way a little bit. What is that? Okay, that's the uh, e-brake. Let's see if we can pull that out of here and get that out of the way a little bit so you guys can see better what's going down. What's going down? And we got a brake line. Yeah, okay, well, that's not too bad in the way. Well, here it is. There it is, guys. That's the uh, bracket I came up with. And I love where it is because it's easy to access those screws if I need to get it off of here and kind of do any kind of work on it or, you know, adjust anything. But uh, just a piece of uh, steel cut to the right size. A little bit of rubber gasket behind the modules when I mounted them just to help with any kind of vibration dampening. Not that I think they need those, but uh, I thought it would be cool to do. So from there, oh, I'm getting caught up on oil lines. From there, you can see I kind of dressed in the O2 lines. A couple zip ties on here, and everything is good to go. And they come down around the body, follow the body line down to this point right here. And that's right, we got four O2 lines. And that is that. And everything else is kind of dressed up out of the way right now, because we are getting ready. I'm going to replace these seals, these engine seals, and put that one right there and replace that one too. But uh, today, we're going to be doing this. This, I'm sure you guys have looked at the oil filter bracket and like, oh, Jay, what are you going to do about that? Well, from CB Performance, I picked up one of their relocation brackets and we're going to go ahead and check that out today, mock it up, kind of get an idea how we're going to use it. And I plan on mounting the boost control solenoid to it as well. That's, that's my plan. That's what I would like to do. So let's get up and show you some of the other stuff that's been going on. Oh, it's getting up. Uh, oh, well, hello tires. Yes, we'll be uh, introducing you to the car very soon, very soon. All right, guys, come on up here to the bench first. Let's go ahead and take a look at these. If you have been paying attention to any of my other videos, you know that uh, I like this uh, Max 2K clear coat. It goes on nice, fine mist, and it helps protect paint that you do. So I've got the one-piece boots on here. I don't really, not a huge fan of the ones that have the, the crack in them that you kind of have to merge together. I bought those just in case I jacked these up, which I didn't, thank goodness. So I pushed these down. I painted both the flange, the mounting flange for the transmission, and the axle tube itself in gloss black, probably about three or four coats of that with primer. And now it's time to do the clear coat. And I'll probably do, you know, two or three coats of this clear coat as well. And that helps harden up the surface and protect it from, you know, nicks and scratches and all that kind of jazz. And it's bound to happen anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and do my best to protect it. So let's look at what's going on over here. Ooh. This weekend's goal, this weekend's plan is to get the Berg 5 speed ready to rock and roll. Yeah, if you were checking out my Instagram, I think I posted on there that I got a new starter motor for it. It's one of those Wasp starter motors. 
WOSP high torque models. Man, doing this one-handed is not super easy. Let me bring it over to the bench and show you guys what we got going on here. Oh, there you go. Look at that bad boy. Yes, WASP high torque starter. This is good for a certain horsepower. Don't ask me what that is. I really don't know offhand, but you're gonna clock this bad boy too for different transmission applications, but yeah. So the Berg five speed is up in the engine cradle here, the engine stand or transmission stand. So I can go ahead and mount our boots and I find it a lot easier to do this this way. I also have the Chromoly MP like high horsepower drive shafts that we're gonna go ahead and try out. Now, Dave Foltz, the guy that I got the nose cone from, the relocation nose cone for the Berg 5-speed, this one right here. Because there's one that Berg makes, and there's this one for early models that relocates the uh, the nose here to where it better lines up with that area right there. This hole in your chassis. So you don't have to cut everything to smithereens, even though I did have to cut that area right there. Well, Dave Foltz is making up some pretty swaggy, pretty great drive shafts too because if you guys don't know there is a shortage in the vw community on high horsepower drive shafts for a swing axle guys all the other engine parts are over here kind of hanging out guys hanging out we got some painting to do for sure so what's underneath here well of course the engine is right next to the transmission take this off real quick what you can see is i've been working on i got to do some cutting and a little bit of fab work to get the rear tin to work with the Bergman fan shroud. And I've also been doing some trimming on this as well to get it to fit better. A little bit of slenderizing in this location. And I opened up the holes here for the, the uh, spark plugs. Now I got some boots that I'm going to, I want to try to use the stock type boots because the big ones that come with like the high horsepower spark plugs are just not a really great fit. And I like the ones that, you know, when you just push it in, they kind of just seat there and it's like thinner material, thinner rubber. That's what I want to use there. Up here's the turbo, kind of chilling out with what's that? Not one, not two, not three, but four wide band O2 sensors because uh, I want to be able to tell what each bank, you know, one, two, three, four is putting out. Make sure everything's good to go. It also kind of helps out with your injectors, knowing if your injectors are good to go, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But that's it, guys. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's all that's been going on. So now it's time to kind of show you what we're going to be working on today, kind of looking at today. But first, guys, I want to remind you, don't forget to like, share and subscribe this content. Click the little bell thing off to the side to enable notifications so that you get all future content from JW Classic VW and this amazing turbo build. <laughs> now back to the video. Do, do, do. So here it is, guys. That's it. This is the CB Performance oil filter relocation bracket. And it kind of like gets installed where your bumper area is. And I'm going to show you this here in a second. This is uh, stainless steel, laser cut. And yes, I know, guys, right? Why didn't I make my own? Why, Jason, why didn't you make your own? Well, this is only like 25 bucks, guys. And for that price, I'll pay CB Performance to, to you know, send me one of these bad boys. It's just, you know, time, money, that kind of thing. Plus, it's it's pretty. It's pretty and shiny, even though I'm probably going to end up painting it. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty. Let's get it up underneath the car and kind of show you where this gets located. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're going to need some tools over here, guys. Oh, 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 what is that? That's my new tool roll. I'm not sponsored by uh, Rhino USA. Made in America. Tool bags, but I really like this tool roll. I just picked it up because, you know, I needed a new one. My other one was falling to pieces, and I decided to go go gonzo and get a really nice one. These bags on here are pretty sweet. They rip right off, and you can move them and relocate them wherever you want to. I thought that was super cool. And it's got little, you know, it's got names on here. Socket, wrenches, pliers, uh, miscellaneous, and specialty. Ooh, specialty, like uh, specialty A and wrenches, maybe. Or whatever it is that you want to carry. But this thing holds quite a bit of tools. And it's pretty heavy duty, guys. Check out the description below if you're interested in one. And I'll link it. So you guys go check it out. Heal. All right, guys. So here is our current situation. I have one of these relocation brackets right here. Like you guys seen these ones used before. This is like goes off of your, your number four exhaust area on your head. Kind of mounts there and then pushes the bracket, whatever kind of bracket you use, 
out so you can put your filter on there. Now you can use uh, just an external oil filter setup itself, like if you have a full flow, full flow oiling system, or you can use like I am, this, this filter is pre oil cooler. So oil gets passed through the filter itself and then back to the oil cooler. And then back from the oil cooler, the line comes down through and then goes back to the engine. So this isn't gonna work anymore because you guys saw all of the craziness going on where the turbo is and the way that turbo header is set up, there's no way that this bad boy is going on there. So I gotta take this off, take this off, put the new bracket in, kind of move this all out of the way and then we'll kind of see what it looks like. So I'm gonna time-lapse this guys for your viewing pleasure and then I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like. Yeah. Cool. Tight enough. Guess we'll find out here in a second. Ooh, baby. It's the vice power. Some vice power. So what's the big deal with the full flow 90? Well, whenever you can install a full flow 90, you should because what it does is it does not restrict the flow of oil in your system. Oil or fuel, you know, because you have hard 90s. Let me gosh, let me show you what a hard 90 looks like. So yeah, so here's our full flow 90. You can see it's got a nice slope to it. Here's our, this is a little less of a hard 90. It's still kind of like a hard 90, but if you look inside of it, there's a lot more like room for things to flow. You know what I mean? It's still a hard 90 because you're hitting a wall, right? You're hitting a wall, but it's not as bad. So you have less, less restrictive, still restrictive, but less restrictive. And then you have this one right here. And this mother dugger, this bad boy is legit a hard 90 because it's pretty narrow inside of there. Yep. So really restrictive. And what this means like in fluid dynamics when it comes to oil and fuel is you're adding foot footage to your lines. So I don't know exactly what it is, but I know this is like maybe like eight inches, maybe a foot. You know, it's not, you know, it's still going to add some because it's a full flow 90. You're still going to add a little bit of length. You know, it's, it's like adding length in terms of restriction and restriction to flow. So we got to think about that when it comes to your oil pump. This is probably like about four feet, four feet to seven feet, something like that. That's, now that is a guess, guys. I don't exactly know. And this adds a lot more, probably like 10 to 15 feet. Well, it's like adding 10 to 15 feet, which means your oil pump, your oiling system is going to work way harder than it needs to. So whenever you can... Remove the hard 90s and install the full flow 90. Deal. So you say you want to install a full flow 90, do you, Jay? Well, the only problem with that is you're going to have to remove the dang straight because, oh, yeah, we're going to run into some hitting going on here. Oh, is that the right size? It, it, it is. It is beautiful. Okay. So what does that mean? We're going to have to take this bad boy off and then put it back on, whatever. We're going to have to clean it out real good, too, because you don't want to try to use any kind of, like, uh, Loctite or anything like that when you've got dirty surfaces because it's going to impede its ability to seal, seal properly everything. All right, guys, so here's what I ended up doing. So we have our full flow 90 where I talked about that. The temperature gauge is on the other side of this bad boy, so it's going to kind of be hidden out of the way. Cool. And then up here we have the pressure gauge so this is going to the light and then to the haltech giving us oil pressure and then we have our feed this is going to be the oil feed for the turbo coming up out of there so that's what we came up with yeah let's put it on the bracket up underneath the fender and see what it looks like how about we do that jay okay let's do that all right guys well here it is mounted up underneath the fender and i gotta tell you i do like how well it's tucked up underneath here and it's hard for you guys to, to really kind of 
understand, I guess, with the, the way the wide angle view is on some of the times when you're looking at this for the camera. But uh, yeah, man, I like it. So oil from the engine, from the full flow is gonna come up into here and I'll probably just use like a, a, a 90 AN fitting, one of my 90 AN fittings into here. It'll come up through and then cycle back through out to the oil cooler and then the line will come back down through and then back into the full flow. So that's great. I've got my oil pressure and uh, oil pressure in for this for the, the light up here and for the Haltech. Here's the feed for the turbo and that's definitely enough line here to get me over to the turbo itself and the temperature gauge back here. It's gonna work out great. I got plenty of line to terminate to all my uh, connections I need to make back here. So cool, very cool. And that is going to work out great. And that's pretty much it for today, guys. Not a whole lot to talk about, but uh, I thought I would show you what I was using for my oil filter remount or relocation mount. And it's great. It's great where it is. It's out of the way. And I think with this location, I can even put a little bit bigger filter on there if I wanted to. This is a pretty small one that's on here right now. Very cool. All right. See you guys in a second. So yeah, guys, that is going to wrap it up for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about that uh, oil filter relocation mount from CV Performance. Good stuff. I appreciate all you guys, all my subscribers. You guys are awesome. Got lots of new people in the subscriber count. Yeah. Instagram. Thanks for all the comments. All my new people on Instagram, too. You guys are awesome. High five. <laughs> Have a great weekend, guys. Enjoy some time in the garage. Enjoy some time with your family. I will see you guys on the next video. This is Jason with JW Classic VW and Goose. Bye, guys. All right, guys, I also did say something about the uh, boost control. And I think in the boost control, I just pop a hole right in right there on the bracket. And the boost control mount there real nice. I think I might even do need to do like an angle. It's still there and it clears the filter, no problem. If I end up using this location for the boost control, which I probably will, I think that'd be a good spot. And just being able to put a hole right in that bracket, you can drop it down a little bit, put that hole in that bracket and we'll be good to go.